Today we're going to be talking about section 2.3, which is all about angles of rotation. So if you think back to geometry, you remember that the biggest angle you can draw is 180 degrees, right? So you could do this as 180 degrees. You knew you couldn't do anything bigger because if you tried to do something like this, you know, we always measure the smaller side, right? So in our effort to define sine, cosine, and tangent for all possible values, not just numbers between 0 and 90 degrees, we want to find a way to define an angle so that it has, or it can be any size. So this is where we come up with this idea of an angle of rotation. So the way we do this is we have our xy axis, and we're going to draw in one arm of our angle, always on the positive x-axis. This is called the initial side. And then our other arm of our angle, starting at the initial side, is going to rotate around the x-axis however far the angle measure that we're looking for is. So if we were talking about a 130 degree angle, no, let's say 190 degree angle, something that's impossible to draw with our geometry. Well, I know that every quadrant is 90 degrees, right? Because this is these are right angles. The x, y axis meet at 90 degree angles. This is 180. So 190 would be over here somewhere. Or this little sliver would have to be 10 degrees. So that's a 190 degree angle. We can also, using this convention, define a negative angle. So let's say that we wanted to talk about a negative, you know, uh, <clears throat> 100 degree angle. So we're going to define positive angles rotating counterclockwise, and we're going to define negative angles rotating clockwise. So again, one quadrant is 90 degrees, so this is like negative 90. And so like 10 more degrees then is there, and that would be like negative 100 degrees. So positive angles are going to rotate to the right, or sorry, rotate counterclockwise, and negative angles are going to rotate clockwise. Now, an interesting question would be, what if we wanted to talk about a 90 degree angle and a 450 degree angle? Well, so a 90 degree angle would be this. And 450 degrees, well, 90, 180, 270, 360, and then we're 90 more puts us at 450. So we've gone around one full time and then back again to here. Notice when we look at these two angles, both 90 degrees and 450 degrees, the terminal side of their angle is in the exact same location. We call these two angles coterminal, and that becomes a definition. We say that coterminal angles Our angles with different measurements both 
but the same terminal side. So let's do a couple of examples here. So let's say we want to find two angles coterminal with 47 degrees. So I'm going to draw a picture to just kind of illustrate what's going on. Eventually, I don't think you guys will need to draw a picture, but we're doing this for the first time, so let's just be careful. So we know that the first quadrant is 90 degrees, so 47 degrees is right about the middle of the first quadrant. So an angle that's coterminal to this, say we rotate um, counterclockwise, I have to go around one full time and end up back here at the same location. So going from here to here is one full rotation. So that's going to be 360 degrees to get to here and then 47 more, so that would be 507. Would be one example of a coterminal angle. But we don't, we could go around more than one time, right? So what if we start here, go around once, go around twice, and then a third time, or, and then back to 47. So starting here and going to here was 360, one full rotation. And then starting here and going to here is another 360, one full rotation. And then from here to here is another 47. So that's going to be 867. If I wanted another coterminal, at this point, hopefully you see what's going on and you don't even have to add or draw the picture. We're just going to add another 360, right? So what's that? Uh, 12. 07, I think. No. Nope. Nope, 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 Seven twenty, uh, ten eighty, so eleven twenty seven. My apologies. And there's nothing to stop you from having to say add 360. You could be subtracting 360 just as easily. Okay. Uh, what if instead of using things in degrees, what if say we wanted to do something in radians? Oops, uh, let's say that this is actually 5 pi by 4. Okay, let's find two angles coterminal of 5 pi over to 4. So again, we'll start by drawing our picture. So remember how each quadrant, when we're dealing with degrees, is 90 degrees. So if we're dealing with radians, if I convert 90 degrees, into radians, that's pi over 2. So each quadrant is half of pi, or is a half of pi. So 90 degrees or pi over 2, 180 degrees or pi, 270 degrees or 3 pi over 2, and then 360 degrees or 2 pi. So if I want 
5 pi over 2 is like 1.25 pi. So we're starting here at the initial side, rotating halfway in between 1 pi and 1.5 pi. So 5 pi over 2, or 5 pi over 4 should be right over there. If I want something coterminal to that, just like I did before, I could go forward once around and then go to that spot. So once around is 360 degrees. And if I convert that into radians, that's 2 pi. So I could do 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. So to add those fractions, I need to make a common denominator. It should be 4. So this is really 5 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4. So 13 pi over 4 would be 1. And then we could just add another 2 pi to that, right? Because 2 pi is the same as 360 degrees. And I know that 2 pi is the same as 8 pi over 4, just to save myself making fractions. And so I have 21 pi over 4. Um, also worth noting that you could go backwards instead. So for example, you could do this, which would be equivalent to, say, subtracting 360 degrees, or in this case, 2 pi. So again, we make our common denominator. So you could do it that way as well. Again, you could add 360s or subtract 360s. You could add two pies or subtract two pies. Either way, successively adding or subtracting is going to keep giving you coterminal angles one after another after another. And that's it for this section. Now, this was a very seems very easy, but it is a critically important that we're able to draw these angles of rotation and get them in the right quadrants. They're able to find these coterminal angles. Those are really important skills moving forward. So just because this was quick and seemed very easy, make sure that you really understand it well, because these are really, really important skills that'll come back again and again and again. And if you don't understand this well, it's gonna cause problems as we move forward.